Hi guys, I hope you are uh, well. I will start briefly by just uh, telling you this is my second talk, the first one being stupid pen tester tricks. This year we take a new approach and new stupid problems to solve. Um, the intent being behind most pen tests and rent team engagements I have is if it's stupid and it works, then it's not stupid. Because in this room, there are plenty of people who are super elite to know about assembly and do really hardcore stuff. I'm not one of those guys. All I do is I cheat. So I, I just want to share with you some stupid tricks that I use that really work. Um, in fact, it's like teaching old pen testers new tricks. That's really my approach. It's new approach on things really stupid. So I hope that... I've, after this presentation, you guys have confidence to try new red teaming tricks. But do not ex expect assembly or zero days in this talk. So let me start with a classic, the good old USB key drop. So we've seen it in movies, like people drop USB keys. The thing is, I don't know for you guys, but we have perhaps a 35% success rate. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's flickering, all oh, right, almost, good. So the good old USB drop, thing is it only works 35% of the time, <laughs> almost. Oh, it's good enough, all right. <laughs> so the thing is the reason why it doesn't work so much anymore is because Layman's know about it. It's in Mr. Robot, it's in the Bourne movies, it's in the great movie Firewalls, the exceptional documentary Hacker, NCIS, CSI Cyber, like everybody knows about it. So that's why people don't just drop, plug USB keys anymore, because we all know about it. I, I changed this completely. I found this awesome new technique, brand new zero day. Instead of putting dropping USB keys, I drop keys with a USB. <laughs> and I swear, it's a whole different game. We, we do post-infection uh, interviews, and all people are like, this is totally different. I was trained about not plugging USB keys, but this is an entire different thing. <laughs> and it works really well. Now, I know some of you are telling me, well, you know, um, this is... Last year, I talked about keys, and people all wondered how I got keys. So good, this year, I purchased 20 kilos of keys for you that a volunteer will uh, walk around with. So you can buy it by the pound on eBay, so, so don't worry about it. So please take as much as you'd like. So, So why key, uh, while you are getting keys, the reason you need to know is this, do you know who this guy is? This guy is the patron saint of pen testers. This guy is called Milgram. He's a, psycho he's a guy doing psychological studies in the United States in the 50s on two really cool subjects, authorities and influence. And this guy found out that depending on the context, you can do, have people do pretty much all what, what you want. Uh, what he did is he sent a letter to himself, and he said either friends of the Nazi party, my very sick grandmother, or the AAA, and he looked about how many, key, how many cards he got back. And turns out, if you got a sympathetic, sympathetic link with the person, then you get more people to uh, do what you want. In this case, plug the USB keys. So one, last year, for some people who were there, there were some talks about Disney-branded keys. Well, it turns out that if you have a babyface keychain or a Disney-branded USB, uh, a Disney-branded key, it works so much better because no pen tester would do this, right? So, <laughs> so one more thing. You can also target who will plug it in. So you can also purchase hundreds and hundreds of RSA tokens. And why you can purchase hundreds and hundreds of RSA tokens is because when people find keys, you want the sysadmin to plug those keys. So if you have a VPN token, people will simply say, go to the IT department and say, hey, look, by the way, did you drop those keys? And they will plug it in. <laughs> now, I know what you're going to say. Yeah, but who buys hundreds and hundreds of RSA tokens? Turns out, I did, and there would be a volunteer <laughs> sharing the USB. <laughs> Thank you.
Now, now that the USB trick is shared, let me start any other stupid email tricks. Sometimes I want to intercept uh, emails between two targets, but I can't exactly do man in the middle, it's super complicated, so what about a stupid trick instead that would allow me to intercept emails between two people? Well, I'm not sure if you know what OAB is, but o OAB is an Outlook file called Outlook Address Book. And basically what it means is if you reply to someone or interact with someone, you will get added to their offline address book. And basically all you got to do is be before the person in alphabetical order. So say, if I want to be John Smith, I send an email to, called John A. Smith, and if I get the person to reply to me, then I'm just before them in the contact. Because who types the whole email in Outlook? You start typing the email, and it'll autocomplete, right? So all you gotta do is make sure the person replies to you, and you're the first one. So you can mend the middle specific conversations between two people just by sending one email. Now, the question you should ask yourself is how do you get the person to reply to you? And that's where it's a bit tricky. It's a bit tricky because you need to be just enough passive aggressive to get an answer, but not too difficult because they'll call right away. If, there's, if it's so awkward, the person will just call. So this is my favorite one. Hey, name, did you receive this email? Is there an email problem or are you avoiding me? You're letting the person in out so they can see there's an email problem and it's out so they will not find the phone. If you're too aggressive, they'll call and then they'll know something is wrong. Um, one thing, if you're more in APT, uh, just buy a very similar name and wait for files to enter. Like it, I've seen some campaigns where they buy a very similar name, like they add a one more L at the last of the name, or one S, and they just wait for typos, and they just grab the, the, the files they send, and that's it. So basically, emails are not that difficult most of the time. Now, in the past, I've also done alarm systems. Alarms, I'm going super fast, because I want to make sure you guys get all the content I can give you in 30 minutes. And alarm systems, I see most people struggle a lot with it. People struggle a lot because we take the problem differently. We're all trying to sabotage a system, to, to bypass a system while it's on. But most of your organizations, the alarm systems are off at least half of the day when clients are in. So how about instead of bypassing the system and using uh, special radios and decoding and keys and difficult stuff, how about you just buy PAM? So I'm not sure if you know what PAM is. It's like Greece, and it is wonderful to bypass pretty much every uh, movement detector. Spray PAM, one light spray, will totally block any uh, movement detector, and you're done. Now let me ask you, how many people clean their movement detector before they leave? I think the answer is next to none. Um, this technique is totally not mine. I stole them from Antwerp Diamond Thieves. And I think if it's good enough for Antwerp Diamond Thieves, it's good enough for us. If you can't, say you don't have PAM on you, just move an object in front of the sensor. You wouldn't believe how many times I've just moved a plant a few inches left and blocked a whole sensor. And that's pretty much all you need to do. Um, now you've bypassed, or you're already a ninja. You've bypassed already all the, the movement detectors, but you still have doors. Now most of the door systems are super simple and can be bypassed with magnets. But the trick you need, you ask yourself is, how do I know if the system has an alarm and how do I detect where to shim? Because that's how you bypass the, that kind of system. The trick is, is called magnetic viewing film. This is magnetic viewing film. This is a magnet. So the moment it's next to a magnetic field, it'll show up. So you just put this next to the door, and you'll know immediately where to put your shim. So you don't need to carry fancy electronic equipment. You don't need to carry anything else. All you got to do is carry this around. No batteries required, nothing, costs five bucks over eBay, and that's it. You know exactly where the alarm system is, how to bypass it, 
just with a simple film. Now, in the movies, we know one a very important part in any heist is obtaining blueprints. It's a super important part in any heist. Now, I'm not sure if you've tried to get blueprints in a heist, but it's not, you can't just call uh, the city and say, hey, by the way, do you have the, the, the blueprints for that vault? People don't usually get, give you this. So how do you do it? Well, turns out there's a, a company called Emporis that buys pretty much every plans they can in Canada and the United States. So for 15 bucks, you get pretty much any blueprints you want. It's a building research company, and it's really awesome. So I guess they don't show that part in the movie, but it's pretty much like in the movies. You call, you download the thing, there's techno music. It's really cool. Um, <clears throat> moving to the next subject, command and control. So for people who are not a bit into malware, CNC or command and control is how your malware interacts with the with you, how you give it order. The problem is when you're doing red team, having your CNC detected is a problem because if it's found, then your campaign is pretty much over. So let me give you a few tricks that I found useful that are pretty stupid. Um, my favorite one is if you can host your CNC on your server of your victim's server. So it turns out there are quite a few places where you can put data and it'll stay there. Um, say, for example, if you have a forum or product review that you can inject text, well, send your text there, you have the malware fetch it, and this way, if people are looking at logs, they'll just see legit traffic going to legit, to legit websites, and most of the time, if it's internal, there's no, not even any proxy between the client and the corporate server. So pretty much, there's no inspection points. Now, what kind of, where can you find this? Best place if you have a Notes server. Lots of Notes, sorry for users. Um, if you have uh, lots of Notes, there are special keywords, you can look it up online, that allows you to upload or edit forms without permissions. So you can hold it there. Um, many f f uh, workflows are multi-step um, forms. So you do the first step, press next, do the second step, do next, do the third step. But if you stop at the second step, the, um, the data on the form will be saved server side and you can use this as a command control. So you can leverage your own client server as a CNC. And this way is super nice because whoever inspects traffic going to themselves. Um, of course, encrypt your data because the last thing you want is your client finding out about it and leveraging your own CNC to clean itself. So use some encryption at least. Um, one thing is super nice, once again, this is not mine, but I felt it was super nice, is a side channel. So there's a, a framework called GUPT. And what GUPT is, it's malware that looks for SSIDs around it. And it will execute commands based on SSIDs around it. So if you're next to a, uh, if you have physical access or near a place where you have physical access, you infect the malware and you use a side channel being the name of the SSIDs around it to send commands to it. There's no way a suck's gonna find this. It's really nice. Super simple, it's not mine, but it's awesome. So I'm sharing it with you guys. Uh, one, one thing that I find really nice, um, there's a talk at Black Hat this year that will talk more about it. It's not mine, so apologies to that person. Um, most, some, uh, some hosts are not even allowed to access the internet. Sometimes there's several proxies or different things, but what pretty much all hosts can do is send emails via Outlook. Now, Microsoft sent awesome documentation how to use Outlook to send emails, read email, receive emails. So there's a, it, on TechNet, it's really, really well documented. You can use Outlook as a channel to send and receive emails. And this way, you can have your malware do this. And of course, pro if, provided there's no weird words or anything, there's no proxy, there's nothing. It works super well. Of course, you need to make sure you delete the, file, the, the emails as you send them and as you receive them. Otherwise, it'll be fairly obvious for the, the person you, who receives it. 
now I have something brand new for you guys. So this morning I was watching this talk about Shell Co's an image, right? Don't kill my cat. And it's super awesome, but it's super complicated. It requires knowledge about assembly and everything. And I felt this is really hard. There must be a stupid way to do it. Turns out there is. So instead of putting the code, do a poly BMP polyglot, how about you just write the code in text in, and do a print screen of it? So you have a JPEG file of the text of your assembly, and then use PowerShell to do OCR on the file. So instead, <laughs> you will just, and it works the same. Like there's no, the moment we have AV people doing OCR on images, we've won, guys. Like there's no way this is gonna work. So it's just a same, do the same thing just differently and it works. All right, exfiltration. So we all know about DLP, about some super, super advanced techniques to prevent exfiltration. Let me show you two really nice ones. Um, the first one is encrypt it, then upload it to VirusTotal. So some people may know, if you've got a paid account on VirusTotal, you can download submitted samples. So say I want to exfiltrate data, and I don't want to be a link between myself and the client, I can submit it to VirusTotal, then later with a paid account, download the file. So if people are looking at network traces, there is no way they're going to find the, the whole uh, the exfiltration. Super nice. Just make sure if you're, a pen, if you're a bad guy, no problem. If you're a pen tester, ensure you encrypt it before because you don't want to really share all the secrets with the client, so just be careful. Um, one more thing. There are some really simple systems that block USB keys on, uh, on hosts. But most of the time, all they do is they block the driver USB 32.sys. So take your old Zoom or any protocol talking MTP, and suddenly you'll bypass most uh, USB blocking software. So it's a simple trick. Buy a Zoom, they're like $5 on eBay, and you're done. Um, now let me start to talk to the next subject, de-anonymization. So all, some contracts were allowed to attack clients at home. So if we can find where they live, we can perhaps attack the Wi-Fi at their home. But the problem is how you get their address. Most of the time, all we have is a cell phone. Well, in this case, you can call. The idea is you need to find a service that when you call with the spoofed phone number, they'll give your address. And it turns out there are way more than you believe. So first thing you need to know how to spoof a number. It's fairly simple. Uh, there are uh, apps that do it for $5, or just, it's really, really easy. And you can call all those services, like automated taxi services, name withheld. They, they will say, oh, do, do you want a taxi at the following address, which is the last address you went? But all it takes is your last phone number. So it, it looks on your, your, so if you spoof your phone, you can have that person last taxi location. Um, some large energy providers, if you report an outage, that energy provider will, 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 will say, oh, did you mean, is there an outage at that address? And then you get the address of the person. Um, some delivery and postage services have a similar service when you can say there's an automated teller system that tell you give your phone number and it'll tell you if there's a package at what address. So what's amazing with all those uh, all those services, is you don't need to speak to a human. All this can be scripted, and it works super well. So if you want to de-anonymize someone, someone's cell phone to address, all those tricks are super simple. Now, rubber duckies. So it's a very, let me talk to you first, what's a rubber ducky? Um, a rubber ducky is a device that emulates a keyboard. They're super nice, Hack5 does really, really nice uh, rubber the keys, there's only one problem, is they cost 50 bucks. So first, let me share with you, and this is not mine either, did you know that you can buy a $1 rubber the key? It's called the At Tiny 85 and it's a $1 rubber the key, so suddenly it's way more interesting if you lose it, or forget it in the admin's laptop, for example, then it's less of a problem than if it's a $50 rubber the key. And it's super, super simple, 
Uh, it looks like this. It's, I, well, I, there's no way you're going to see this, but it's that small. Um, costs $1, really nice. Uh, I give you the link. So it, it's, I repeat, this is not mine. It's some awesome researcher, but it's stupid because you just need to follow the two instructions and you're done. Um, same thing, there's a super awesome research. So let me set you the scene. Once again, we're in the movies. Imagine if you could, as you walk between computers, see all the computers go black and shells start popping up. That would be really nice, right? Well, it turns out it's totally possible. There's a really cool attack, to, uh, attack tool that can hijack keys in wireless keyboard and mice. And there, it was a talk at Black Hat last year, super simple, and now there's a tool available for it. So try ima imagine you walk around, no physical access except a window, and, you, and if people have wireless keyboard and mice, you can inject keystrokes such as Windows R PowerShell minus NOP something 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 wirelessly into keyboards just as you walk around. It's super nice. You need to look it up. Um, and that's it, guys. I was super fast. Do you have any questions?